What is do baby reaction? Video reaction not reaction. This is this is exact analysis video. We got a big game coming up. Cowboys versus 49ers. A lot of some there's two different sides of it. You have the delusional uh Cowboys fans who, you know, with no knowledge or sense in their head, think that the Cowboys are gonna win. Then you have the delusional 49ers fans who have maybe arguably even less sense and not a single thought going on in their brain about why they think that the 49ers are going to win. But for the most part, there's two delusional, most part clueless fan bases giving their opinion on why they think their team's going to win. I might be a Cowboys fan, but I'm not going to give this analysis as goofy, clueless, delusional, none of that. We're being 100% objective. You know, if 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 the 49ers had have any, um, you know, things that they're better at, us, at you know, I'll, I'll go. I'll be the first one to say they have an advantage. I'll say this is where their advantage lies. You know, so let's go ahead and get to it. Now, the biggest thing for the 49ers, they want to win. Let's be honest. It's Brock Purdy, this man right here. Uh, Brock Purdy, for some reason, has not lost a regular season game or actually a NFL game. Unless you can count the Eagles game in the NFC Championship. I don't. But besides that, they have not lost. He isn't lost at all. Which says a lot about the team and Brock Purdy. But in, in my estimation, it's mainly about the team. I think a lot of different quarterbacks can come in and do what Brock Purdy did and does. But one thing about Brock Purdy, Brock Purdy does not turn the football over much at all. Now, he's going against the Dallas Cowboys. And we're our defense, that's what we turn the football over a lot. I mean, we, we get a lot of turnovers. We beat the team last week 38 to 3. 38 to 3. They benched Mac Jones. Benched him. Hey, that's what happens when you play against the Dallas Cowboys. But you look at his stats this year. All right. Uh, you know, Steelers. Steelers are horrid. I mean, let's be honest. They have a what two and two record, but they're not two. They're they're not like they're not a good team. They they beat the teams they're supposed to be, and they don't beat anybody else who's good. Uh, two hundred twenty yards, two uh, touchdowns, zero interceptions. This is the big key stat: zero interceptions so far this year. Also last year, he only had four interceptions the entire last year entirety. Um, so two hundred twenty yards, two touchdowns. Rams, two hundred and six yards, zero touchdowns. They still won that game comfortably. Giants, 310 yards, which is a good game. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. Cardinals, 283 yards, so one touchdown, zero interceptions. So, Brock Purdy is really, he's dinking and dunking. He, he, he may hit a big play, but let's be honest. The receivers are 5,000 yards. There's no one within 5,000 yards of them. You know, I could throw and hit a lot of these receivers, so let's be honest. Then he's throwing it, you know, a five yard screen to, to Debo and he runs it for twenty yards. Or he may hit Brandon A. Uke on a on a on a on a, on a slant and he takes twenty five. So, you know, Brock Purdy has good stats, but it's cause he, he's playing with a lot of good players. If Brock Purdy was playing with uh with uh, you know, a talented team such as like the the Steelers, you know, he'd be looking like can he pick it out there? Now I think he's probably better than Kenny Pickett because Kenny Pickett's, you know, I don't even know, I don't even know if he's good enough to play, uh, you know, in, in Canada. Let's be honest. Uh, Steelers fans, sorry. Now, of course, the biggest thing for us, Dak Prescott. You know, he lets us down too many times to count. Too many times to count. Dak Prescott. I've cried over Dak Prescott. I'm ashamed to say it. 2016, I thought that was our year. Came out there in the first half against the Packers. Stunk the place up. He came back and gave me hope. See, I would have been fine if he just stunk it up the entire game. It gave us hope. That was the issue. Dak Prescott gave us hope. That's the issue with this man. But this year, he only has one interception, which is good. 143 yards against the Giants. We didn't need to do much. We didn't need to do much. 44 to, or 40, was it 40 zero? You know, we're good. We're good. Jets, what is like 30 something to, to 10? 255 yards, two touchdowns. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's what I like to see. The Cardinals stunk it up. 249 yards, one interception, one touchdown. 
The entire offense was looking good, let alone our red zone offense was looking horrid. If we win this game, it's because we score touchdowns and not kick field goals. You heard it here first. We win this game, it's because we score touchdowns and kick field goals. The Patriots, 261 yards, one touchdown, zero interceptions. That's very good. Very good. Very, very good. I like to see that. You know, zero interception is key. Dak have turnover is if Dak Prescott gives the ball away this game, I guess 49ers, we lose. It's very simple. Dak Prescott, we need zero interceptions for us to win. Very simple. Uh, and I think you can do it. Uh very simple. Zero interceptions, we you know, we're in a very good position. One interception, all right, we're in a better position. I mean, not a better position, but we're not okay with that. Ideal, but we can make it work. Two more, you know, let's be for real. Kisha McCaffrey. Easily y'all's biggest offensive weapon. Easily. Uh, I think most people understand that. Uh, Steelers, 152 yards. Rams, 116 yards. Giants, 85 yards. Cardinals, 106 yards. Clearly, this man is on pace to have a, what? Look, he's well, 450 yards. So he's, you know, he was 1,600 yard rushing season at this pace. It's pretty good. Over 1,600 yards, actually. Uh, but will he keep maintaining this pace? I don't think so. If he does, <laughs> offensive player of the year is going to him. But I don't see it happening. Well, actually, you have Terry Kill and Justin Jefferson also doing good. And Puka Nakua, who, who I don't even literally just heard of him, like, probably like. This is the first game of the season. He did good. I was like, oh, never heard of this guy before. But anyways, he has a six total combined touchdowns this year. 459 yards rushing. He is the biggest weapon for the 49ers, which is cool. Uh, the issue is, so that's kind of the Cowboys' weakness is stopping the run. You know, even teams who aren't built to run the football the way the 49ers are can run against the Cowboys, you know. Cardinals, that's really was the reason why we lost the game. Well, not the only reason, but one of the bigger reasons why we lost the game, we couldn't stop the run. They kept running it right down, right up our gut. Boss. Extra boss. But, you know, that's that's just what happened at the end of the day. Also, make sure you hit the subscribe button right now. We're running 2,000 subscribers. I appreciate the subscribe button. brother. out. Thank you. Thank you very much. So, this is not bode well for the Cowboys, considering that this is their go-to when it comes to how they win football games. And this is our nemesis when it comes to why we lose our football games. But we also have an equalizer on the side of the ball. Goes by the name of Micah Parsons. Micah Parsons may be the, he's definitely the most versatile def defensive player in the entire league. Uh, he can play, you know, four or five different positions on defense, which is very versatile if you ask me. Great pass rusher. Uh, definitely let him get a couple of hits on Brock Purdy. Let's see how he plays. If, if Michael Parsons get to the quarterback against Brock Purdy, let's see how Brock. Let's see how Brock Purdy reacts to getting hit in the mouth by Michael Parsons. I, I, would, I personally would like to see it. I personally would like to see it. My, Michael Parsons is a beast. And anyone who, who denies that, you're a little delusional and probably a hater. Little delusional, probably a hater. Not even a little delusional, probably hater. You're delusional and you're an extreme hater. Either that or you're just really just, you know, something's going on with that brain chemistry. But this right here, one of our other big keys to winning. Michael Parsons has to have a big day. Now, when it comes to the Cowboys 49ers, I will get my, I'm about to get my prediction, all right? So we, we, we're seeing that these are two very good football teams. If anyone denies that these are both two good football teams, you're delusional and probably a hater. Definitely a hater. And more than likely, both of these teams will make it to the playoffs yet again. It'll, we'll see if they end up playing each other for the third year in the playoffs, but it's definitely two playoff football teams right here. So we ask ourselves in October, um, or pretty fairly early on in the season, which, should, which of these teams are going to win? And for me, 
you know, it was a tough deliberation because I, I wanted to be unbiased on this. I know a lot of times you'll say, Zach, you're so biased. You, you're just a 49ers hater. No, you're just a 49ers hater. I don't know. Brandon A. Yuka is, is a top two receiver when it comes to route running. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. whoa. Christian McCaffrey. Oh, 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 you know, a lot of that type of stuff. Dak Prescott, he's terrible. He should be, you know, he's a bottom third quarterback in the league. All this type of stuff he's trying to say. Okay. I, and I hear the feedback, you know. I, but so that's why I'm coming to this objective. But here's here's my here's my prediction. I'm thinking this is probably going to be a higher scoring ball game. The last two times it was low scoring. Both playoff games it was no one scored over above like 24 points. Uh, I think the max anyone score was like 23. So I you know lot, those are two you know relatively low scoring football games. Like for one that have max 20 points, another one I think the Fortnite's only got 20. That's low scoring. Now, I think it's going to be a higher scoring football game. It just happens to be it's only going to be on one side. And it's the Dallas Cowboys. We're winning 35 to 17. You heard it here first. 35 to 17 Dallas Cowboys. That press cut's going to look amazing. Amazing. Y'all are going to be crying. 49ers fans are going to be crying and upset. You're going to have tears crawling down your eyes. And I cannot wait. <laughs> I'm telling you, Sunday can't come quick enough. (laughs) Sunday can't come quick enough. I mean, the Dallas Cowboys, you know, I have no fear. A lot of y'all are saying, y'all should be scared to play us. Y'all should be scared to play us. You should be worried when you play the 49ers. You wear the real deal. Bang, bang, Niners gang. You're goofy. (laughs) If you actually say bang, bang, Niners gang, you think that's cool, you're goofy. I'm sorry to tell you that. (laughs) You're a goofball. You're absolute cornball if you think that's cool. Second off, the Dallas Cowboys are winning this. I do not care. Dallas Cowboys 35-17. You heard it first. 3-5. We're putting 3-5 on y'all's defense. Brock Purdy turns the ball over twice. Twice. Our defense might score. I, I think our defense may score this game, too. Uh, I think McCaffrey, he probably eats. Let's be honest. You know, I'm being kind of, I'm not being kind of, I'm being 100% objective. Uh, we're being 100% objective. I think McCaffrey probably eats. He probably gets his 100 yards. But Brock Purdy? Mm-mm. Nope. No, sir. Anyways, Reggie, like, subscribe, comment, and ask you next. Deuces!